Well, welcome back in to game number two here at Municipal Stadium in Waterbury, Connecticut. It's going to be Borghese getting the start today. Vincent Borghese, the righty out of Southington, Connecticut, starting it off against Christian Petrillo. Nate Miller going to get the start on the bump for the Lightning in game number two. 0-1 the start, and that one spoiled to even the count back out at one apiece. Borghese making his third start of the season, his fifth appearance of the year, coming into action today with an 0-2 win-loss record, a 14.04 ERA. He has allowed 15 runs on 14 hits, and he's going to get his afternoon started with a ground out here. Weak contact from Petrillo right back to Borghese, and he gets the out at first. Does it quickly on just three pitches. Braden Coleman'sberger, the shortstop, up second here for the Lightning. Two changes to the Lightning's lineup in comparison to game number two, and those are down at the, the bottom of the order. Kalen Camp's catching for the Lightning here in game number two. He will bat seventh. Dante Di, Di Sabatino. He will be the DH in this contest. Number 34. And he will bat ninth. Anthony Charles is in the game still. He was the DH in game number one. He is the starting right fielder in game number two. The count even to Coleman'sberger, and he clubs this one deep to left field. It sends Gill back. It's over the head of Danny Gill, and it will two-hop off the fence. Coleman'sberger, big jump out of the box, and it's pretty deep to left. But he will hold at second base exactly what the Lightning of Goldie Beacom College wanted to see here. They keep the ball rolling. And it's a double off the bat of Coleman'sberger. And now Musi back up. And now he's got a runner in scoring position. So Garrett Musi, he went one of three in four at-bats in game number one was one of the three runners to come across on the big three-run home run with one out in the top of the ninth by Darren Miller. And so Musi, in coming across, now has 23 runs scored on the season next to 30 hits. That one's cued off the wrist and it will get over the dugout and off the netting. Chris Corchado gave a chase to that one. He had a chance to make the play. And not really. I mean, he would have had to have leapt and reached out over the dugout roof. But a big opportunity here for Vincent Borghese. 0-2 ahead of Musi. Almost got Musi to offer at it. That play bounced in. Oh, wow. And the throw gets between the legs of the third baseman, Rivera. That's tough. Zwigbaum is getting the start catching today for the Eagles. And his throw to the third baseman, Rivera, goes right between the legs of Justin Rivera. So that is, a, that's a, that is an error that will cause the run to score. Unearned run coming across. Wow, and Musi folds himself with a big swing on that one. He's out in front of it, fouls it right off the instep of his foot, and so the umpire, just being a good guy here, being a, a bro, if you will, on all accounts, and he's going to come and waste a lot of time with Vincent Borghese. He's going to give that, that look at the baseball, ensures that, yes, that is still a baseball, and just buys Garrett Musi another second here to, to adjust that wrist guard and get us reset. Writing down the note here, the run scored by Coleman'sberger after he doubles to left field. That ball misses to even the count at 2-2. Two and two. And then in the Musi at bat, the second pitch, Coleman'sberger attempts to steal third. He would have been safe anyway. Then the error, ball going between Rivera's legs, that one just misses outside as Musi thought he was headed back to the dugout with a K looking. 
The throwdown gets between Rivera's legs. It goes in the left field. It allows Coleman'sberger to score. So one run off, one hit, one error, and a huge strike out there. An answer back for Borghese. This is a player in Musi hitting 433. That's just his 10th strikeout of the year. And Borghese delivers. And so he does allow that disappointing run after the double to Coleman'sberger. But now a chance to get out of the inning here with Darren Miller up for the Lightning. Probably the last player that these Eagles in there, maroon and orange, want to see. As remember, Post University was winning 4-1 to one in the top of the ninth inning until this man, Miller, strolled up and hit an oppo boppo about 400 feet over the 382 side to tie it at 4. Goldie Beacom did go on to win 5-4, to four, but Miller grounds out to end the top of the first. We'll head to the bottom of the four, first, one across on one hit, one error, no left on base. Bottom of the first after this here from Waterbury, Lightning 1 equals 0. Welcome back into Municipal Stadium in Waterbury, Connecticut. My name is Chris Del Sordo, your post-University Eagles, losing game number one in heartbreaking fashion, 5-4, to four, and now up against it already, trailing to the Goldie Beacom College Lightning, one to nothing. Michael Pavelchak leading off the bottom of the first for the Eagles. Nate Miller getting the start for Goldie Beacom College, and he's working quickly over with a called first strike. Miller, hands at his waist, gets the 0-1 sign. That's a fastball. He's throwing a lot of velocity today, folks. That one's right down the heart of the plate, but fouled straight back by Pavelchak, and he's quickly behind in the count, 0-2. Nate Miller, the unquestioned ace on this Goldie Beacom College staff, his sixth start, his ninth appearance, comes into action today with a 4-1 and one record and even more impressively, a 1.17 earned run average. That one misses low and in. He's ahead in the count, still 1-2, and two, so he might even have one more to spoil here. Nate Miller, just a sophomore from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. He went to Cumberland Valley High. The 1-2 pitch on Pavelcheck throws the bat out on it. The three strikes thrown in this at bat have just truly been right over the heart of the plate, but they're coming in hot, and Pavelcheck got get the bat around, kind of got the bat around to it, but a bit late. Clouds refilling the sky here in Waterbury for game number two. Miller, set, jam job on Pavelcheck. It sends the shortstop back, but enough room there for Coleman'sberger to put the squeeze on it. He was about 10 steps into the outfield grass, but he had a good read, and Braden Coleman'sberger does everything well, showing you a little bit of the leather right there for the first out of the bottom of the first. Out 
Evan Cornwell, the shortstop. 0 for 2, but he reached base via, pardon me, 1 for 3, and he reached base twice with a walk as well. Cornwell led off the bottom of the third inning with a double back in game number one. Did come around to score. That was part of a big three-run third inning that put the Eagles up at that point 4 to nothing. Remember, they were playing ahead in most of that game 4 to 1. So behind in the count now is Cornwell, 0-2, and the pitch coming in. Late swing on that one. Good job to fight the bat head around on that one as it was a pitch coming up and in. And a nice catch there in the bullpen. Whoever that bullpen pitcher is, I can't quite tell what jersey number he's wearing. He's got an overcoat on over that jersey. But last man up in the post bullpen there down the third baseline with a great catch. And we'll do it again now. Miller. Not working quite as quickly as Justin Jump was doing back in game number one. Big swing. That one gets behind the catcher. Cornwell's fast, and there's not even going to be a throw to the bag. So it will be a strikeout for Evan Cornwell, but he reaches base safely with a drop third strike, and it brings the speedy runner, Cornwell, onto the base paths for the big left-handed hitting first baseman, Chris Corchado. Corchado two for three in game number one, including an RBI double. His loan out, though, he grounded in to a double play. And that was when the Eagles were threatening a chance to score an insurance run and how big that insurance run might have been. Because remember, they were up four to one before surrendering that three run home run to Miller. Corchado, a chance to make amends. Cornwall getting played on by Musi at first, so he's not taking that big of a lead. 1-0 pitch. This one is another chance for two. The toss to second. They get the out at second, but this time, Corchado wins the race to the bag, and so he reaches on a fielder's choice. But two outs, and a tough task here for Jimmy Brennan with that runner still 180 feet away from home plate. Jimmy Brennan, hitless for the Eagles. Pardon me. One for three in game number one. This pitch gets away from the catcher. Kalen Camps. And that's the second one to get behind him here. I think the first one was a... I think we had one pass ball and one wild pitch. Honestly, don't want to be too tough on Camps here. But he comes back out and gets Miller to laugh real quickly. Obviously, you want Miller to just forget about that because it does put Corchado in scoring position. So that opportunity gets that much bigger here for Jimmy Brennan. Nate Miller, 1-0 pitch coming. That one misses low. Brennan ahead in the count now, 2-0. Now, we have seen this post-university dugout have no problem Offering the green light, giving the green light on 2-0 counts. GBC has done it as well. Big chance here for Brennan if he gets one over the plate to tie this ball game back up. Instead, a smart take as this one's bounced in from Miller. And you have to assume Brennan going to be taking all the way here with a chance to put two runners on with two outs. DJ Karen waiting in the on-deck circle. 3-0 pitch coming. That's a take all the way for Jimmy Brennan. And that ball does catch the outside corner. Brings us back to 3-1. and one. Brennan in his junior season from Newton, New Jersey. 3-1 count. Taking that one misses low and away. And so... A walk drawn by Brennan. Now, 
we've yet to have a hit recorded by the Eagles in the first inning, but they've had three runners reach base already. Cornwell struck out but reached on a drop third strike. Corchado reaches on a fielder's choice. Now Brennan on with a walk, and it's two on and two out, and Karen, who went one for three in game number one, a big chance here. Not only the tie, but if this one splits the outfielders, Post could retake the lead. You have the stud pitcher, Nate Miller, on the bump here in game number two, and the heartbreaking loss suffered in game number one. You'll take any early advantage you can. That one dots the outside corner low and away, and you saw Karen there. He kind of spit on it. Knew there wasn't much for him to do with it. Just figured I'd rather take my chances on another offering from Nate Miller. Count even at one and one. Miller working from the stretch. Breaking ball misses away. And so Karen ahead in the count now, two and one. Different feel in these... Basically in every batter since Cornwell. I mean, he struck out Evan Cornwell, but after the drop third strike... It seemed as if Miller having a little bit harder time locating the strike zone. Playing with fire here as he's behind to Karen in the count. Two and one, make it three to one as that one misses up and away. So the runner's probably not going to be going. But Karen has to lock in on his pitch right here. Is a big opportunity to maybe not this game back up, at least move these runners along and keep the inning going. Three and one count coming. Miller delivers. Karen rips it up the middle and it's through. The runner being waved around. Throw coming in, not in time. Corchado in safely and the Eagles not this one back up at one apiece thanks to the second RBI hit of the day for DJ Karen. So Justin Rivera now the six-hole hitter. Up here, and post-university, having to probably already feel like they might be playing with some house money as they're knotted back up with the stud pitcher, Nate Miller, here in the bottom of the first inning. Remember, Miller, 4-1, and one, a 1.17 ERA, and this is ninth appearance and his sixth start. He has allowed 24 hits. He struck out 34 batters. And he's now walked 10. I was going to say only walked 9, but he has walked Jimmy Brennan in this inning. That pitch to Rivera just does dot the outside corner. And so Justin Rivera taking an 0 for 3 performance in game number 1 back to the dish here in game number 2. And you can see quick little discussion time From the coaching staff here, a very quick discussion. I can't quite tell the jersey number. He's The coach is wearing a hoodie, so I have the coaching staff in front of me here for Goldie Beacom College. Not quite sure who that was, but a quick little word to Nate Miller. He is ahead in the count now on Rivera, 0-1. Brennan on at third. That one was fouled up actually over the backstop, fairly close to us. It's on the roof of our press box right now, and Rivera... Going to have to swing defensively behind in the count 0-2. Brennan, the base runner at third. Karen, the base runner on first. This game tied at one. Camp sets up on the outer corner. Miller delivers. Rivera lines it. Deep to right center field. Going back as the center fielder. Petrillo, he dives and he cannot come up with it. One run scores. Being waved is Brennan. He'll score, and it is a two-RBI double for Justin Rivera, knocking the rust off the game. One performance for Justin Rivera. It is double number eight on the season. RBI 17 and 18. And now the freshman, Dario Sosa, up with a chance to blow this game open thanks to the big two-RBI double for Justin Rivera. Post leads 3-1. to one. That feels so good, even like from a broadcaster's perspective right now, watching this team kind of blow the lead the way they did in game number one to come back here against one of the best pitchers in the CACC, manufacture an opportunity, and then take advantage of it. Two hits now. Remember, 
Post had three base runners on before even securing a hit here in the bottom of the first inning. And so, just as game number one, it was a chance for Goldie Beacom in the first. The Eagles were the one that answered, and they took a one nothing lead. Same thing here. One run scored by the Lightning, but a chance for more. And now this one's popped up. It's going to be a tough play for the second baseman. Walker back, and he squeezes it well into the outfield grass. Two hits, five base runners, and three runs scored for the post Eagles in the bottom of the third. Big answer inning has the Eagles up by two. We head to the top of the second. Post three, Goldie Beacom one. We're back here at Municipal Stadium. How good must this feel for Vinny Borghese? He allows a run in the top of the first inning, knowing that he, in his true freshman season with his 14 ERA, is dueled up against stud starting pitcher Nate Miller for Goldie Beacom, and the post offense delivers him three runs. He then goes out, strikes out Andy Walker, pardon me, Kyle Walker, and then gets Anthony Charles to fly out on the next pitch, so he's working quickly. Already two up, 
two down here, and we'll get our first look today at the junior catcher, Kalen Camps. Kalen from Kalura, Maryland, and that is... That's that's up in really the boondocks of Maryland, up in the northeast corner of Cecil County, right near the uh, the Pennsylvania border. And Camps, in his first at bat, will be welcomed to this game by getting plunked on the left hit. So a hit by pitch for Camps gives the Lightning their first base runner here in the top of the second inning. And Dante D. Sabatino, we saw him come in and pinch hit for the Lightning. He's the nine-hole hitter this afternoon. He fouled that ball so hard off of his foot that it almost rolled past Vinny Borghese on the mound. And you can see the umpire here just doing right by the way of the hitter as Borghese trying to stomp some feeling back into his right foot. He gives the umpire the go-ahead. D. Sabatino 0 for 1 in his pinch hit appearance. Hitting 190 on the season. That one misses outside to bring us back even at 1 and 1. D. Sabatino has four hits, but they've all been singles. Five total bases claimed on the year. Borghese. Waits, gets the sign, and dots the lower inside corner there. He has a chance to get his second strikeout of the inning and really apply some pressure to this Lightning lineup. Throw out, no play to be made, so we'll do it again. Vincent Borghese, a 14.04 ERA, came into the game with 8 strikeouts and 12 walks. He's already struck out two, vying for three, and he can't get the placement right there. It misses inside. So we'll do it again with the count even at two apiece. De Sabatino listed as an infielder. We've seen him pinch hit and play D8, so haven't gotten to see him flash the leather yet. Runner goes on the play, and it's going to drop down in front of the center fielder. That's Michael Pavelchak over in center field for this contest. Sosa out in right. Pavelchak in left. Danny or Pavelchak in center. Danny Gill in left. Justin Rivera at third. Corchado at first. Cornwell at short. And here's the first pitch to Demetrius Johnson. So Johnson was the 8-hole hitter in game number 1, drops down to the 9 spot here in game number 2. He reached base 3 times, struck out once, but he walked his other 3 ABs. That one hit the top of the glove of the catcher, and it hit, I believe, the top of the face mask of the umpire, and it took an extra spin off the backstop. And you can see right there the conversation between Zwigbaum and the umpire. It definitely did hit the ump. That's why he had such the, the dramatic mask flip. He's okay, but all the base runners advance a base, and you have a hitter in Demetrius Johnson who has shown you a very patient eye. Now ahead in the count 2-0, and oh, and he's probably going to just spit at every pitch unless it is right down the middle. And so Vincent Borghese now behind to Johnson 3-0. and oh. Four-pitch walk here is Johnson exactly what we thought would happen. And so what looked to be an opportunity to go one, two, three, now all of a sudden it's an opportunity just to get out of the innings with no runs. Remember, Kyle Walker led off this inning with a strikeout. Then Anthony Charles, the next batter, flew out to right. But then seven, eight, and nine, reaching consecutively. Camps gets hit by a pitch. De Sabatino with a single to center. Johnson walks on four pitches, and now Petrillo, after grounding out his first at bat, 
All of a sudden, a chance to deliver a big boom, and there's nobody in the gap in right center field, and deliver he does. That one drops down, and it hops off the warning track. Petrillo is going to empty the bases, and Sosa has some trouble picking it up. We're going to have a play at the plate. The throw, the tag, in inside the park. Grand slam for Christian Petrillo. You ask the Eagles how today is going, there's your answer right there. They were a strike away from getting out of the inning. Then Petrillo delivers the huge boom in between the outfielders. Sosa and Pavelchak. by the time Sosa gets to it, Petrillo's well around second. There's a play at the plate, but the throw is not in time. How about that? So you go from it being a 1-2-3 inning to now a 5-3 ball game, and you're back right into the heart of the order with Braden Coleman'sberger up for Goldie Beacom. So for Christian Petrillo, let me make sure we have this right here. That will be his fourth home run of the season, RBI 17, 18, 19, and 20. And now Coleman'sberger with his second hit of the evening. And so Borghese, for a split second, it looked like he had the opportunity to cruise on through this start. Not so fast as the heavy hitters keep hitting. And Garrett Musey right back up for Goldie Beacom here in the three spot. Musi first pitch swinging, lofts this one high to left. Gill, plenty of room, plenty of time, settles and squeezes. But a huge two-out rally. It's 7, 8, and 9 reaching consecutively for Goldie Beacom. And the big blow, the inside the park grand slam by Petrillo. We'll head to the bottom of the second. So much offense already here in game number two. Lightning 5, Eagles 3. Hunter Keller up to lead off the bottom of the second inning. It was birds flying high, if you will, after the bottom of the first inning where Post answered the one run scored by Goldie Beacom with three of their own to take a 3-1 to one lead. But if you just missed it, Christian Petrillo hitting an inside-the-park grand slam. Keller busting it out of the box, but the throw in time from the second baseman, Walker, Brian's weak bomb. Getting his first at bat of game number two. He pinch hit back in game number one and grounded out. Big swing right there for number 30. Brian, the true freshman, we mentioned this out of spring out of Smithtown, New York. D1 transfer from the University of Maine. Tough take right there as that one kind of started up at the face of Zwigbaum. It broke back towards the plate, but it missed inside. 
So he's back even with the count one and one. Oh, and that one's laced up the middle and over the head of the jumping second baseman, Walker. That's got to feel good for Zwigbaum in his 39th AB of the season. Gets hit number eight, which puts him up over the 200 mark of the season. And back up to the top of the order and Michael Pavelchak. So the Eagles just trying to, to, to match punch for punch here with Goldie Beacom College. A four spot scored by the Lightning in the top of the second. And now the Eagles one on, one out in the bottom. So Wigbaum fakes like he's going to run. This one's laced down the left field line, falling fast, and it will drop in front of the left fielder Johnson and fall out of play. So Hunter Keller grounding out to second to start the inning. Zwigbaum with a base hit to center field. Back up to the top of the order, and Michael Pavelchak. One for three in game number one. 0 for one so far here in game number two. Late swing on that one, and that's lifted over everything, over both sets of backstops. And it actually hit off the jugs machine that the Eagles have set up on the softball field that they used to practice catching pop-ups with. The Jugs machine survived the impact. It, it is still standing. 0-2 pitch coming. Chance for Miller to uh, put it away there. Instead, he opts to spoil the pitch and misses it out wide. If nothing else, the Eagles are uh, affecting the line numbers of Nate Miller. Remember, he came in with a 117 average. This one cuts inside. It jams Pavelcheck a bit. Popped high up to center field, fighting the sun a little bit is Petrillo, but he's able to squeeze it for out number two. I've mentioned this a couple of times now, but it's a, it's a pretty large outfield by Division II standards here at Municipal Stadium, especially down the left field line and to the left center field power alley. But whenever you have balls hit like that up in the air for a while, there's a lot of ground to cover. And the sun has been out more than expected today. So Petrillo, he had a lot of different elements to deal with on that fly ball. And he gets the squeeze. Cordwell is up. He got the fun started after striking out. He reached on a drop third strike and ultimately came around in that three run. Bottom of the first. This one towards the hole. Oh, diving stop by Colmansberger. And he can't get the throw at second. That was a highlight real play just to stop the ball from going to the outfield. The throw to second, not in time. And so Cornwell again reaches, again, actually, so hold that thought. That, that's going to be an infield single, just a tough play for Coleman'sberger. So Cornwell, one for two on the day, but two for two in terms of reaching the base paths. And this brings up Chris Corchado. Two for three in game number one, and he reached on a fielder's choice in his first A-B. He's ahead in the count now, 1-0. and oh. Runners on first and second. Another big blow here. Could get the Eagles back to within one. They could tie. We've already seen a home run today in this ballpark. Corchado, he has the ability to do it. Got to keep every possibility open here at Municipal Stadium. Count is one and one. Miller looks back, takes a step off, and they had the pickoff play there ready to go. Zweigbaum was more than ready to get back to first. It's Brian Zweigbaum at second. He singled. Evan Cornwall at first after an infield single. Chris Corchado with a 1-1 count. That is a perfectly placed pitch on the outside corner by Miller. Took a little bit off it. Not that much movement, but it just stayed right there on the outer black. And now Corchado going to have to switch it up to a defensive approach. Chris has struck out 12 times on the season. But a rather disciplined bat in comparison to his post teammates. 1-2 pitch. Chop that. Musi. Good read. He smothers it and makes the out himself. Two late hits in the bottom of the second inning. But the Eagles strand both, and we head to the top of the third with Goldie Beacom leading 5-3. to three.
Welcome back to Municipal Stadium. My name is Chris Del Sordo, your post-university Eagles after just suffering one of the most heartbreaking defeats of recent memory in game number one. In the middle of an offensive shootout here as we head into the top of the third of game number two. This is the man of the hour, Darren Miller, from back in game number one. The Lightning were down to their final two outs, and he strolled to the plate with his Goldie Beacom team, trailing 4-1, to one, and exited stage right, an oppo boppo over the right field wall, actually right over the 382-foot marker out there in deep right center. And you can see Post appropriately pitching him very carefully here. Already Borghese behind 3-0. and oh. That one, well-framed by Zweigbaum over the outside corner. He drags it back in, and that's a strike for Vincent Borghese. That one lined back up the middle, and Borghese had to pick life or limb. He chose life on that, and that one does get through. So Miller now, a three-hit day, two in game number one, his first of game number two. And Kyle Walker... Back up for the Lightning here. Walker, one of the few Lightning players who hasn't recorded a hit in either game number one or game number two. A little bit of a mound visit here, and so we'll take a quick break. We're in the top of the third inning. One runner on, and the, Be and the Goldie Beacom College Lightning leading your post-university Eagles 5-3. So Ray Scold back in the dugout here at Municipal Stadium is Borghese. He's back into the stretch. Runner at first is Musi. That is a perfectly executed bunt by Kyle Walker. I tell you what, even if Borghese was able to have gotten to that ball, I don't think he would have had the throw. But that bunt perfectly goes between the third baseman Rivera and the pitcher Borghese, and it's going to be an infield single bunt, and look out. Anthony Charles striding to the batter's box with dangerous intentions here. New sign getting signaled in from the Eagles' dugout. Infield playing up and in. And the shift doesn't work. They come in, and it's lined over the head of the second baseman, Keller. One run's going to score the throw. Cut off it short, and they get the out at second. No, they don't get the out at second. I thought I saw the umpire signal out at the bag. Charles looked to beat the throw. He's in there safe, and so it will be a double for Charles, and the lead doubles up for the Lightning, 6-3. So GBC up 6-3 to three now, still no outs recorded, and that strike does catch the outside quarter. Camps, in his first at-bat of the day here, back in the second inning, was plunked on the very first pitch. So he's finally swinging away now as he had one to hit there out over the plate. Little late on it, he fouls it straight back, and Borghese finally ahead of a hitter here in the third inning. Out in front of Kalen Camps, 0-2. Camps, this is his 16th game. A very good hitter off the bench for the Lightning. Three. We have that right. 344 now in 33 plate appearances off the bench. 
Sweeping breaking ball there. Doesn't catch the outside corner and Borghese having to do it again. For Vincent Borghese, a pitcher who he's pitched a lot this season, he only had eight strikeouts coming into action today, so it has to feel good that he's gotten two more so far in this outing. Almost blows that one by Camps. Can't quite do it, and we'll do it again with the count at two and two. Brian's weak bound. Your catcher today sets up, blocks that one, throw down to first. It's a tough play at first. Corchado almost got pulled off the bag, but it will be a strikeout and the throw made out at first. And you have to think, you can hear some of the, 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 the jeering from the Goldie Beacom dugout. Di Sabatino back up for the Lightning. Now, you can hear the chirping from the dugout, but there was a very close play at second to play before with Charles. Benefit was given to the Eagles. This one's popped up into foul ground. Coming on and making the play is Gill, and the runner fakes running. Smart play there. By the base runner, Kyle Walker at third. He would have gotten doubled up. Danny Gill showing you why he's an every game starter. Moves over to left field. Rivera was probably just as close to that one. But Gill had the read on it. Calls him off. Covers about 125 feet. And squeezes it in foul territory. For a clutch, well needed second out of the inning. So D, T D Sabatino flies out. It brings us to Demetrius Johnson and the bottom of the order. How about that? Goldie Beacom College. We're still in the third inning. And they've already batted around twice. That one catches the outside corner. And so as you can see, when the game kind of loses its equity, the strike zone kind of loses its boundaries. <laughs> and expanding a little bit for the called strike there. The one and one pitch coming to Demetrius Johnson. Couldn't quite work that outside corner. Back in the hitter's favor, 2-1. and one. Demetrius, a sophomore from Glassboro, New Jersey. It's the home of Rowan University, a big D3 school down there in South Jersey. Demetrius opting to uh, go across the Delaware Bay and play his college ball in Wilmington, Delaware. That would almost hit him. Misses inside, and so... Borghese, it's just his second walk issued so far. He, he struck out three and walked two. But the bases are now loaded, and it's Christian Petrillo. And I don't need to remind you, but I will... He was up with the bases loaded the last time, and he hit a grand slam, and inside the Parker to deep right center field, it was a ball hit on a line. It was never hit that high up in the air, but it was just perfectly placed between the center fielder Pavelchak and the right fielder Sosa. And Sosa was the one that got to it first, but he got to it up against the wall, had a little bit of trouble with the throw. Ultimately, the throw gets cut off by the shortstop Cordwell. And by the time the, th the, the ball was thrown in, Head first slide, Petrillo safe, bases are cleared. That put Goldie Beacom up 5-3. to three. A chance to stretch it out even further here, but the outside corner dotted by Borghese, and instead he sees a light at the end of the tunnel. Bases loaded full of lightning. One and two the count. Two outs. Borghese delivers. One-two pitch. No, just too much. His weak bound was trying to frame it, his momentum, he kind of had to drop out of the squat and completely sit down. So it's much harder to frame a pitch when you need to do that. And the count goes even to 2-2. Two and two. Two, 2 pitch to Petrillo. Grounds this one right to Cornwell. He'll flip and just barely get the out at second. Well, every one of these outs was a white knuckler. It could have been a lot worse, but Borghese gets out only allowing one. We'll head to the bottom of the third inning. The Eagles, they're still in striking distance, but they have to come up with some work here against Nate Miller. It's Lightning 6, Eagles 3.
We're back here at Municipal Stadium. Your post-university Eagles trailing the Goldie Beacom College Lightning 6-3 to on the heels of a heartbreak defeat in game number one of the doubleheader. The Eagles were up 4-1 to heading into the top of the seventh. They allow a game-tying three-run home run and a go-ahead insurance run to ultimately fall to the Lightning in game number one, 5-4. to A whole lot of offense here to get us started in game number two. Already nine runs. Nate Miller just trying to find a calm here. He allowed three runs in the bottom of the first, and he gets touched. This one's deep to left field. Going back is Demetrius Johnson. Leaps at the wall, and he makes the catch. It is a deep wall out there, and Jimmy Brennan tested that one, and Johnson leaps over the warning track, comes down a step away from the wall, and squeezes the ball, finishing the catch up against the left field wall. A long, loud out number one for Jimmy Brennan. We'll get our second look in game number two at DJ Karen. Karen had what, at that point, was the big blow in the game. An RBI single to center field to knot it back up at one apiece, which at that point had to make Post feel like they were on top of the world after the game number one finish. After Brennan reaches, Rivera hits a two RBI double to score him, and the Eagles led three to one since... Some run manufacturing, and of course, that inside the park grand slam, it's hard to win games when that happens to you, has put the Lightning back up 6-3. to three. Big swing there from Karen, almost comes out of his shoes as he pops this one straight up, and it hits off the back row of seats right behind us, down the first baseline a little bit. So the count goes back even to Karen. DJ, how about this? Two for three in game one. One for one today. He's up to three for four now. That average in 350 territory. Petrillo gets called off by the right fielder, Anthony Charles. And he squeezes that for two quick outs here in the bottom of the third. Here is Justin Rivera, who admittedly did not have that good of a game number one. Was one of just two Eagles without a hit. He went 0 for 3. But a huge ringing double. Splitting the outfielders. It put the Eagles up 3-1 to one at that point. This one, slightly late. That one's hit well. Look at that catch by the Goldie Peacom bullpen. They deserve that one right there. That's number 15. Jake Kelchner. The D1 transfer from Hofstra University. Hanging out with his buddies in the bullpen there. And he read that one all the way. As Rivera laced it, it just clips off the very top last bit of netting. And 15 with a big catch. Always fun to keep keep the dugouts and, and bullpen involved in each contest. Oh, Miller had to think he had strike number two there. And even from my vantage point up here in the press box, I don't really see where that one missed, but you'll, you'll take it if you're a fan of the Eagles. Brings Rivera back even in the count one and one. Miller, working a little bit quicker than we saw in the first two innings, gets Rivera to swing and lift this one lazily out to right field. Charles settles, squeezes, and a 1-2-3 inning for Nate Miller, just what he needed, bringing us to the top of the fourth inning. Lightning still hold the lead 6-2-3. We'll have more on the Nest Network right after this.
Braden Colemansberger leading off the top of the fourth inning here. The quickest half of inning of baseball that we've had was right then in the bottom of the third, a 1-2-3 inning for Nate Miller. This one's popped up a mile. Rivera has a tough play. This one is in fair territory. He gets called off by the shortstop, Cornwell. That's such a good play by Cornwell. You saw where he was, folks. He was about eight feet away from the left field foul line. But he had the better angle. He calls off the third baseman, makes the put out, and that's a big first out here in the top of the fourth for Vincent Borghese. Garrett Musi back up. Oh, first pitch swinging, first pitch ripping. Sosa on his horse, and he closes down that space in right center field and squeezes it. It was a tough play for Sosa in that inside the park grand slam for Petrillo, but he got a great read on that one. He's tall, right? So when you're six foot four, those strides, they cover more ground, but he got there quickly. And two quick outs. How about this? It was a five pitch inning for Miller. And this one's going to go foul or else we had a chance at a three-pitch inning as well for Bergesi. Kyle Walker. He was 0 for 4 until his last at bat in the top of the third inning. 0 for 4 on the day entirely. 0 for 1 coming into that last at bat, but legged out an infield single and then almost immediately after that, was retired on the base paths, but the fielder's choice by Charles allowed one more run to score, and that made it 6-3. to three. So Walker, we've seen him make his fair share of big plays defensively, finally with a hit next to his name offensively, but he's got a hitter's count now, 3-1, and one, and he takes that one low. Borghese... Kind of a bit too animated for a pitcher that's behind in this game, 6-3. to three. He, not just one palm up, but he shows both palms to the umpire. And I don't have a problem with it, but I'm assuming the umpire will. And, you know, you're, you're, you're dealing with his good graces here. For Vinny, that is just his second walk surrendered. Two walks now across from three strikeouts. This one's lifted high on the first pitch. And squeezed for the final out of the inning by Pavelchak. So, not a 1-2-3 inning, but, but almost. Four batters, three quick outs, and we're rolling right along all of a sudden at Municipal Stadium. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth with the score still. The Goldie Beacom College Lightning, six. The Post-University Eagles, three. More right after this on the Nest Network. We're back here at Municipal Stadium, and it is 7, 8, and 9 due up for the post-university Eagles here in the bottom of the fourth inning. We're in game number two, a game that's been rolling right along here so far. Even though the nine combined runs, you have Nate Miller on the mound. He looks to be settling in. It took him just five pitches to get out of the bottom of the third, and he greets Dario Sosa with a hittable pitch right down the pipe. And Sosa, big swing, slightly late. Dario, his 16th game of the season, his true freshman season, a local player out of Waterbury. He went to Holy Cross High. Batting 200 on this young season is Sosa. Eight hits in 48 bats. 
one of those hits is a double and make it nine hits in 41 at bats as Sosa smacks one into right field past the reach of Garrett Musey. For the ninth time this season, it's a base hit for the true freshman Dario Sosa. We've seen him make some nice plays. He sets the table here to start the bottom of the fourth for Hunter Keller. Twelve combined hits now in this game. Five of them surrendered by Nate Miller. Seven by Vincent Borghese. And in spite of the, the litany of base runners, that one was a fake hit and run. Almost made the catch, but it's over my head and uh, in the parking lot behind us at Municipal Stadium there. Keller, big swing on that one. It was a pitch right down the middle. The Eagles had the hit and run going as Sosa was off on the pitch. Keller just couldn't square it up, and he fouled it straight back. 13 hits, 7 ribby on the year for Hunter Keller. Batting out of the 8th hole, your starting 2nd baseman. Shows bunt, pops it up, and pops it over the screen right next to us. And another very hittable pitch. Keller couldn't handle it. He's quickly behind now in the count 0-2, and... Looks back towards the dugout for the next sign, but when you have Nate Miller cruising along like this and having no problem finding the strike zone, then it behooves you to just put bat to ball and hope it stays straight. 0-2, Miller going for the put away and getting the put away. He dots the outside corner. You can see Keller so frustrated with himself. It looks like he turned like three more shades of red over the course of that at bat. And very frustrated, but that's that's one of the best pitchers in the conference, just dotting the corners. Nate Miller came into action with 34 strikeouts. That's his fourth today, so up to 38 on the season now. And Zwiegbaum, today's catcher, takes that pitch. It bounds away from camps, and Sosa will take second on the pass ball. Keller now, that is his third strikeout of the day. He had two back in game one. Just 12 strikeouts on the season for Hunter Keller. Oh, and that one, I tell you what, that could have hit Zwiegbaum. Instead, he ducks the head. He's able to get the bat out of the way for ball number two. And this is such a broadcaster thing to say, but <laughs> you keep your body on the line, right? You, get, you reach base safely. But that was about a 91, 92 mile per hour fastball up in the, the head region of Zwiegbaum. So he once again chooses life over limb. I can't blame him in the slightest. And Miller takes advantage of that. Puts a two-seamer in and spins that one back inside on Zwiegbaum. It started off the plate. It spins back in to catch the outside corner. And Nate Miller gets himself one back in the count two and one. Zwiegbaum, so just like Sosa, a very impressive-looking freshman, and they look confident, both of the, these hitters do, from that right-handed batter's box. A bit of a late slash there from Brian Zwiegbaum. But you don't crack the starting lineup as a true freshman without showing a little bit of jam. Let's see if he opts the defensive route here or goes full swing on the 2-2 pitch. Kind of halfway between both. It's a late swing, and he fouls it out of play. Good job by Zwiegbaum just trying to make Nate Miller work. Miller, through three innings, took him just 49 pitches to get through those three. And you have to think, with, these seven, with this seven-inning doubleheader on the schedule... We saw Justin Jump go the complete game back in game number one. Have to think that's the desire here. But this time, another pass ball gets through camps. And Sosa standing upright at third base with still just one out. Zwiegbaum showing a great eye here as two different pitches in this AB have gotten past the catcher. Now he has a chance to work a walk. Really any ball in air, in the air, or just in play in general. As long as it's not a grounder to the left side, you have to think it scores Sosa. Ken Zwiegbaum put bat to ball. 3-2 pitch, misses high. And look at the true freshmen, both of them with impressive ABs. Now runners on the corners as we head back to Pavelchak in the top of the lineup.
That is the first walk issued by Nate Miller today. I don't think this will surprise anyone, but next to his 38 strikeouts on the season, he has now 10 walks. So that walk does take him into double digits on the season, but just barely. Right at 1.2 walks per outing. Pavelchak up. First pitch swinging. Lifts it. Petrillo sends back. Still going back. He'll catch it on a backtrack. Sosa will score easily on the sack fly. They hold Zwiegbaum at first. And so a run scored, but nothing else past that. It's an RBI sack fly. And the Eagles back to within two. It's 6-4. to four. So here's the shortstop, Evan Cornwell now. He's the tying run here with Zwiegbaum on at first. GBC leading your post-university Eagles 6-4. to four. Cornwell swinging and he pops this one up. That was a pitch to hit, but it will be settled under by Charles and he squeezes it to get the Lightning out of trouble. I don't think these, are, these innings are going as smoothly as Nate Miller would want them to. But beggars can't be choosers and... Four wins to his name on the season, still leading as we head to the top of the fifth. Top of the fifth inning up after the break on the Nest Network. Goldie Beacom, six, post four. We're moving right along here at Municipal Stadium into the top of the fifth inning, and Anthony Charles, a big swing on that first pitch from Vincent Borghese. That was the 71st pitch of the outing for Borghese. Right now, right at 17 and a half pitches thrown for inning. That was a very hittable pitch in the Nitro Zone for Charles, but he was a little late on it and fouls it over the home plate backstop here and. Off to one of those ancillary side fields at Municipal Stadium. Borghese been fighting. Drops that curveball in. Almost gets Charles to chase. But listen, he came into to today getting the start with an 0-2 record and a 14.04 ERA. And he's battled against this very competent, capable GBC lineup. To keep the Eagles in this game against the Lightning's ace. He has allowed seven hits and six runs. Misses there, and that'll bring the count back full to three and two. But he has struck out three Lightning hitters. Can't make it a fourth, though, as he got out in front of Anthony Charles 0-2. And for the third time today, Borghese's gotten out in front 0-2 and then subsequently has issued a walk. It has been a lesson in patience for Anthony Charles. He had three walks in game number one. That's his first walk in game number two, but he has reached base safely five of his seven chances today. We have a pitching change coming, and that does mean that Borghese's line is 
almost final. He is going to be responsible for the runner at first, but across four plus innings of work, he allows six runs on seven hits, striking out three and walking three, and his line is final after 77 pitches. And so Nick Gomes, number 36, the lefty in a sophomore season out of Suffield, Connecticut, coming in to pitch for the Eagles. We'll take a quick break. We'll let him, let him get warmed up, and we'll have more on the new lefty coming in when we come back on the Nest Network. We're back here. Nick Gomes coming into pitch for the Eagles, making his sixth appearance of the season, a 17.05 ERA in 6.1 innings of work. Anthony Charles, the runner at first. You have to think Gomes may be potentially worried about Charles there. A bit of a pitch out on the first pitch to Camps. Puts him behind in the count 1-0. They throw back, trying to catch Charles sleeping, and that probably was a little bit closer than they anticipated. Cam's waiting on the 1-0 pitch from Nick Gomes. Gomes from the stretch, and he plunks him. So he missed too far outside on the first pitch. And misses too far inside on the second pitch, and quickly runners on first and second as it's the designated hitter. Di Sabatino. Dante, a business administration major out of Cecil County Community College. An opportunity here for the eight hole hitter to turn this game on its head. It seems like the Eagles have been kind of up against it against Goldie Beacom. And to their credit here in game number two, they have pushed four runs across against the staff ace, Nate Miller. But Goldie Beacom kind of feels like they might be playing with their food a little bit here. And now with Gomes on the mound and a player who's shown some trouble to find the strike zone. He finds it there, but the throw from Zweigbaum too late. And Anthony Charles, hold your phones at home. Folks, he is 6 for 6 today, stealing bases. Brings him up to 14 of 15 on the season. And on the throw down, it allows 
Camps to take second as well. So runners on second and third, still no out. Gomes can't dot the inside quarter there, and it has DiSabatino ahead in the count, two and one. And you can see head coach Ray Scold heading back out now. This game really on the precipice. You have a pitcher who, kind of regardless of the scenario, has had some trouble keeping the ball over the strike zone, and that's paramount here. Is there are still no outs recorded in this inning for the post-University Eagles. So how do we get here? Well, scoring for both teams in the first. For the Lightning, it was actually Coleman'sberger stealing third, stealing third successfully, and then on the throw to third, getting past the third baseman Rivera, he scored on the play. That made it one to nothing. The Eagles with two big blows in the bottom of the first. First, it was a RBI single for DJ Karen to make it one to one. Then right after that, Justin Rivera, a double off or to the wall in right center, put post up three to one. But... An inside-the-park grand slam for Christian Petrillo made it a 5-3 to three game. And Anthony Charles doubling to deep right field made it 6-3. to three. One run scored by the Eagles in the bottom of the fourth, making it 6-4 to four on a Pavelchak RBI sack fly. So Gomes back with a 2-1 count, puts it right down the middle and Honestly, kind of blows it past Dante DiSabatino. Can't fault number 34 there. You weren't really looking at anything near the strike zone. So he had the bat on his shoulder. He keeps the bat on his shoulder there to bring the count back full to 3-2. and two. Gomes delivers. Late swing, defensive swing from D. Sabatino, but he fights to keep the A.B. alive. That, I have to think with the way the umpire's been giving the outside corner that that one might have been dotted in there for a strike. We'll do it again. Count is 3-2. and two. That one misses, and so Gomes almost gets himself out of trouble. Instead, walks Di Sabatino, and now the bases are loaded for the nine-hole hitter, but maybe one of the best bats on the team, Demetrius Johnson. Probably is what's happening right now is Nick Gomes. You can see that long stare over the over the bleachers down the first baseline, and he is getting pulled. The score still 6-4. to four. So Post, it's very much in this game. It's a two-run game, but they got to stop the bleeding, and they need to do it quickly. The bases are loaded with no outs, and the new pitcher is number 20, Eric Gutowski, the senior out of Cheshire, Connecticut, has to put a tourniquet on the situation here. We'll take a quick break from Municipal Stadium. Goldie Beacom leading 6-4, to four, threatening with the bases loaded. Gutowski coming into the game when we return right after this.
Demetrius Johnson le- uh, back up here as the new pitcher in for the Eagles. Eric Gutowski, the senior out of Cheshire, Connecticut, making his seventh appearance in 8.68 ERA, and he gets Johnson swinging big on the first pitch and coming up empty. Johnson technically one for two today, thanks to four walks so far. He came into action with 21 of them. He's up to 25. Seven more than the next closest teammate on the Lightning. Gutowski, though, pumping the strike zone here. And he's ahead of Demetrius Johnson. 0-2. Bases loaded full of Lightning. 0-2 pitch. Got it! Inside corner, strike three. And Gutow, wow, you can see right there Johnson not too thrilled. Kind of makes a line with the bat, showing where he thought that one was off the plate. Got to give credit where credit's due, though. Gutowski, a huge K for the first out of the inning. And how about this? The bases are loaded, so there's a force out at any base. Petrillo is up for the third time today with the bases loaded. And yes, he does have a grand slam. He hit it back in the bottom or in the top of the second in inside the park job that split the center and right fielder. And he won the race in on the cutoff throw, sliding in safe head first. He's the reason why the game is 6-4 right now. And he's ahead in the count of Gatowski 1-0. Showing bunt, slapping bunt, hitting it hard and well foul. A lot of these bunts have uh, been up in the air. Not really textbook deliveries. It's worked for both teams, but you're playing with fire right there as Petrillo has shown bunt twice in this AB. Keeps the bat on the shoulder there as that one misses up and away and the count back in Petrillo's favor 2-1. and one. That grand slam for Christian, his fourth home run of the year. RBI 17, 18, 19, and 20. Oh, and he laces this one deep to right field. Sosa, long run. Sosa dives, and it lands in foul territory. He can't make the catch, and that's strike number two. Sosa in the middle of a good afternoon here for Post University. One for two from the plate. He's made two big plays defensively. That ball misses high, and Gatowski now asking for a new one with the count back even at two and two. Vincent Borghese got the start for Post University. Throwing 76 pitches. Allowing six runs. Late swing there for Petrillo. He just is able to get the bat to it. And will extend this A-B for one more pitch. With the count still two and two. Petrillo one for three today. Already his fourth at bat in this contest. And we're in the top of the fifth. That one misses up and away as Gatowski just tries to blow it past him. Can't do it. Dangerous situation here as a ball could give Goldie Beacom a three-run lead. 3-2 Three to two pitch on its way. Gutowski from the stretch delivers. Bounces this one in. Run's going to score regardless. Let's see if Camps tries to test the catcher. No, Zwiegbaum covers it up in time. But a walk scored on the run. And Christian Petrillo now has five of the seven RBI for Goldie Beacom in game number two. They're getting it done uncharacteristically, but the result's still the same. Team's out in front with a 7-4 lead, and now Colbensberger up with the bases loaded. He's up for the second time today with the bases loaded. Takes that one over the outside corner. Remember, still just one out in the inning. Borghese got us started. Gomes came in and faced two batters. Hit one, walked the other. Gutowski has come in. He's since allowed one run on the walk to Petrillo. And this count now back even to Coleman'sberger, one and one. One one pitch lifted to center field. 
It sends Pavelchak back. Still going back. At the wall, and he slams into the wall, and he collides hard, and this might be the second inside the park Grand Slam. No, they are going to hold the runner, Coleman'sberger at third. The second big blow with the bases loaded. Pavelchak, it sent him all the way back to the fence. The ball, it, it hit the zero in the 400-foot sign out in dead center field. There's, I mean, there is a world that Pavelchak catches that ball, but it's it's one time out of 100. It caroms around off the fence, and Coleman'sberger in safely with a three RBI triple. For Coleman'sberger now, it is his second triple of the year. RBI 34, 35, and 36 on the season. And right when post-university thought, hey, maybe we'll get out of trouble here. Now there's a runner on third. It's a six-run deficit. And the big bopper, Garrett Musey, up to bat for the Lightning. So 10-4, to four, the score now at Municipal Stadium. Goldie Beacom, 19-11 and 11 on the season. After a huge come from behind win in game number one. Vying for win number 20 here and well on their way all of a sudden. Scoreless in just the fourth inning. And the second Borghese came out of this contest, the wheels sort of fell off for the post-university bullpen. Musi swinging first pitch, lining it foul. Just barely foul down the left field line. And the Eagles... Playing with fire here, basically every full swing taken by number 55. This one Q-tipped off the end of the bat, and they have the runner in the pickle. You want to try and make sure you get the out here. Zwiegbaum has to reach up high to keep this one alive. They're playing with fire, and the out is made at third. They do get Coleman'sberger out on the tag. Let's see, post-university, or actually, no, that was Goldie Beacom's third base coach. Mike Peden, <laughs> with something to say to his base runner, Coleman'sberger, you'll take it. If you are the Eagles, Musi puts that one into play. Actually, probably the right decision made by Gutowski. You could have just thrown Musi out at first, but then you had to worry about Coleman'sberger, and you would have just allowed him to come in and score. You are able to finish off the pickle play, get the second out of the inning, and if nothing else, the score holds at 10-4. to Gutowski now working quickly with Darren Miller in the box. Lutowski. Oh, on the pickoff play, and they just miss Musi. If that throw was to the shortstop side of the bag, Cornwell had a very real chance at applying the tag. Instead, Musi, not the fastest runner on the team for Goldie Beacom, is back in safe, and Miller ahead in the count 1 0. Big swing from Darren Miller. That was a similar looking swing to what we saw the ball leave the yard on back in game number one. If you're just tuning in or if you missed all of game number one, the Eagles were up 4-1, to one, trying to just close out the win in the top of the seventh. We're playing seven inning games with this being a doubleheader. And Miller was up to the plate with runners on the corners and one out, and he hit a 400 or so foot home run opposite field over the 382 side in deep right center field. That tied it at four. They got another run to make it 5-4 to four and held on in the bottom of the 7th to win game number 1 by that 5-4 to four score. Glutowski trying to get Miller out. He pops this ball straight up. Second baseman didn't see it. Then he recovered and did, and Hunter Keller is able to put that one away to bring us to the bottom of the 5th. But really the biggest inning so far for Goldie Beacom College is 
And they get four more here to bring us to the bottom of the fifth, up six. Nate Miller quickly back out to the mound for his fifth inning of work, and we will head to a quick break. When we come back, it'll be the bottom of the fifth inning, Lightning 10, Eagles 4. We're back here a very fast half of the inning here in the bottom, or part of the in-between innings here at Municipal Stadium. So we do have a personnel change. Uh, that's our first one that's not a pitcher here in game number two. Adam McAvoy, the junior from Sewell, New Jersey, in Clearview High, he's in to catch for Goldie Beacom College. But Nate Miller is still out there. And so we'll see if Camp stays in the game. He got drilled by a pitch in the top of the fifth inning. So McAvoy, your new catcher. Corchado leading off the bottom of the fifth. And he takes one right down Broadway for strike number one. Corchado hits this one to right center field, calling him off as the center fielder Petrillo, and he dropped it. Oh, he would have been better suited letting Charles catch that one in right, but Petrillo runs him off, and Corchado for the second time today with a big double, leading off the bottom of the fifth with an extra base hit for the Eagles. Jimmy Brennan, the cleanup hitter. Up next here for the Eagles. Has to love to see Corchada getting on with a big double ringing into the gap. Nate Miller, no, no two ways about it. Not his best outing by any stretch. Getting plenty of run support, though, holding this 10-4 lead. And how about that? Placed where no one is. Corchada getting waved around. Charles comes set. Throws it home. Not in time. And it's an RBI base hit. For Jimmy Brennan. Brennan had an RBI base hit to right field back in game number one, and that's his second ribby of the day, and it brings the Eagles back to within five. It's 10 to 5. So for Jimmy Brennan, his second RBI today, his first in game number two, he's got 17 on the season, and now Karen first pitch swinging. Deep to right, and it drops in between the center fielder and right fielder. Petrillo lost it in the sun. It drops it in front of Charles. Karen quickly back to second. They hold the runner, Brennan, at third. And how about this? Post-university, rolling. A double, followed by an RBI single, followed by another double. And now Justin Rivera, who has the big hit here in game number two for the Eagles, back up with a chance to, to really tighten things up here in the bottom of the fifth. Tough play right there for Petrillo. Similar to the ball hit from uh, Corchado to start the bottom of the fifth inning. Now the Corchado ball, that was going to drop in regardless. Here, I think if Petrillo just lets Charles finish tracking the ball, it's, it's Charles to catch and he puts the squeeze on it. Petrillo at the last second called Charles off, but then also then lost it in the sun. And you could see the way he reacted. I mean, he was staring into the sunshine. And that's how it got past him and all the way to the wall. But it was a tough read for Brennan, so he couldn't bust it out of the box. They have to keep him at third. But there's still no outs here. And Justin Rivera, who was hitless in game number one, now one for two today. Strolls up to the plate with 18 ribbies and two runners in scoring position here. Big shift to the left 
As the second baseman, Kyle Walker, is more or less directly behind the second base bag, Garrett Musey, the only player on the right side of the infield. Good disciplined take there from Rivera, as Miller, probably I, a little bit of trouble. I mean, you could call it what it is. Only 49 pitches to get through three innings of work, and since then he has thrown 30 more. That one misses outside. The new catcher, McAvoy, not getting the benefit of the doubt that we saw Camps get. Might have to figure out this umpire strike zone here and, and framing policy a little bit better. Well, let's see. Does Rivera have a green light here in this count? Ahead in the count, 2-0. and Runners on second and third. He does have a green light and was a hair too late. Fouls it back out of play into those bleachers down the first base line. Thought, honestly, it would be a little more gross here in Waterbury this afternoon. The sun has stayed out. It's kind of chilly, but even less wind than we anticipated. Just turned into a really nice Sunday for a baseball doubleheader. That one's pulled out of the right hand of Miller, and maybe he's in his own head right now, but in trouble with Rivera ahead of him in the count 3-1. and one. After Rivera, Dario Sosa waiting in the on-deck circle, and Hunter Keller, the second baseman, in the hole. 3-1 and one pitch coming. Miller from the stretch, right down the middle, and Rivera just couldn't get the bat around on it. It was there to be had. A little bit of a two-seam cutting action. Cut right back in, out over the plate. Could see our umpire out at second base having a little fun with Miller there. Gets the ball back to him. Miller waiting for his sign. McAvoy looks to his dugout. Gets it. Looked like Miller might have called off the first side. Now he's ready. 3-2 pitch coming to Justin Rivera. And it's chopped at towards Colemansberger. No runner on it first, so he'll have to throw it across the diamond. It's a ground out, but it's another RBI for Justin Rivera, his 19th of the season. And in a day where we didn't feel like we would get any offense in game one, that game ultimately saw nine runs. Well, we're up to 16 total runs in this game. Offense abound at Municipal Stadium, and don't tell the Eagles they're out of this game yet. They have eight hits just like Goldie Beacom, and they're back to within four. It's 10 to six with just one out. And Dario Sosa up for the Eagles. Sosa one for two today. Takes that one up and in. A little, little bit of chin music there from Nate Miller. Brushes Sosa off the plate. And a 1-0 count. So three RBI now in this contest for Justin Rivera. Sosa huge swing. Chops that one foul right into the glove of McAvoy. McAvoy now the third different catcher that we've seen Goldie Beacom use, and all three we, we've seen uh, have shown the ability to, to, to frame pitches and cover their ground defensively. Kalen Camps got hit by a pitch back in the top of the fifth inning, and probably the precautious route to pull him. Now, from what I remember, Camps was able to turn his back to the pitch, so it really kind of hit the back of his left rib cage, the back of you know his shoulder blade. But I feel like everything is kind of vulnerable when you're playing the catching position. Another one inside that Sosa is just barely able to get out of in time. I'm not going to say he's really strongly crowding the plate. I mean, he's a, he's a large man, 6'4", 220. He fills out the batter's box well, but he's not right on top of that home plate. Miller, I think, just mis-executed mis that pitch. 3-1. Oh, and it's fouled straight down. I think it's off the foot of Sosa. No, it is going to be a ground out just right back up the middle, and so a big second out here in the bottom of the fifth for Nate Miller. Not often do you see a ball drop down straight like that after hitting the bat and still ultimately getting to the pitcher, so I, I figured it was off the foot of Sosa. He busted it out of the box, and now Keller, last line of defense here, for the Eagles, he struck out looking on three pitches his last time up, and he gets started with one right down the middle from Nate Miller. Keller, big swing on that one, just a hair late as he blasts that ball deep out of play down the right field line. But Miller, all of a sudden, 
He looked like he was going to be up against it this inning. The Eagles have scored two. But still standing at third is DJ Karen, and there's a plunk. So hit for hit, as this game, both game one and game two, has seen its fair share of hit by pitches. Keller has to wear that one. That's the last thing that Miller wants because this brings up Brian Zwiegbaum. And the true freshman won for you today looking very confident in the batter's box. Well, he has a chance to make this a two-run game. Best case scenario, maybe even a one-run game. But Miller still hasn't thrown all that many pitches. So he's going to ride this one out for the duration here. Keller on at first. He was hit by a pitch. Karen on at third. He doubled in a run earlier this inning. Zwiegbaum first pitch taking. Some good late movement on that pitch from Miller catches the inside corner. I mentioned that Brian Zwiegbaum coming into action today was 7 of 37. Now 8 of 39. If he gets a hit here, he guarantees that he will end this doubleheader over the Mendoza line on the season. 0-1 pitch. Miller took a little bit off that, and that late break pushes it out of play. So Zwiegbaum evens his count back out at 1-1. One one. You have the leadoff hitter Michael Pavelchak waiting in the on-deck circle. Big opportunity all of a sudden here against Goldie Beacom's ace Nate Miller. 1-1 one, one pitch right there on the outside corner. And this Eagles rally, it's been an impressive one. It's lasted longer than we anticipated here in the bottom of the fifth. But it's down to his last strike. Let's see what they do with Keller here. Not a big lead, and it looks like Musi trying to hold him on at first. So Miller, working from the stretch. The 1-2 pitch. Misses up and away. Zwiegbaum is able to hold the bat back, and so we'll do it again now with a count at 2-2. Two and two. Brian listed as a catcher and outfielder on the post-university roster. We've seen him catch in DH so far today. Miller comes set. 2-2 two -two pitch. Jam job over the head of the second baseman, Walker. And the Eagles get one more back. The second hit for Zwiegbaum. He will get over the Mendoza line. An RBI for Brian Zwiegbaum. And the Eagles back to within three. It's 7-10. For Zwiegbaum, it is his fourth RBI of the season and the Eagles continue to fight here they are bringing the tying run to the batter's box in the form of Michael Pavelchak you never know what you're going to get when you come to the ballpark I don't think anybody saw the conclusion that we had of game one happening probably even less people saw this Nate Miller's day is done. How about that? And his line is not finished yet. Four and two-thirds innings of work. He has allowed seven runs on nine hits. Folks, he came into action today with a 1.17 ERA. That is gone by the wayside now. We have a new pitcher coming in, and it's big number eight, Ryan Pozo. Six foot one, 240 out of Fords, New Jersey, and Middlesex Community College. So the big righty coming on for the Lightning, trying to get themselves out of a jam here, and you can already see he's going to be throwing some heat. We'll take a quick break and come right back on the Nest Network. Pavelchak due up. Chance to tie the game here. It's Eagles 10, Lightning 7.
Pozo in for the Lightning. Pavelchak up for the Eagles, and he's first pitch swinging now with runners on first and second, and he serves that one foul. Pozo, as we mentioned, big-bodied pitcher at 6'1", 240. Really good numbers, too. This is his eighth appearance on the season, a 2-0 win-loss record, a 4.2 ERA. He has allowed 27 hits. He struck out 23 batters. Pavelchak put good bat to ball there, but just a hair late. He fouls it off. And so quickly, behind in the count, 0-2 to Ryan Pozo. Keller on its second. Zwiegbaum at first. Pavelchak with the 0-2 pitch coming from Pozo, and he lines it up the middle for a base hit. Being waved around is Keller. Petrillo has some trouble. It's ultimately picked up by the left fielder, Johnson. Or no, pardon me. Yeah, it was Johnson that picked it up in left field to get the throw in, but another base hit. This time, it's Pavelchak scoring Keller. And the Eagles just go station to station. And we have a full-fledged comeback on our hands. Runners at first and second. This is the go-ahead run at bat in the form of Evan Cornwell. You just never know what you're going to get in a CACC conference baseball game. Pozo delivers. That one's right there, dotted on the outside corner. And it looks like he put that one in with a little added emphasis. Cornwell one for three. But he's reached base on two of those three at-bats. He struck out in the first inning, but reached on a drop third strike. Ultimately came around to score. So the on-base percentage doing numbers here. Pitch blooped, and Coleman'sberger is able to read it and put it away. But a crooked inning matched with one for the Eagles. They put four across, and we head to the top of the sixth inning in a brand new ball game. Lightning 10, Eagles 8, top of the six after this on the Nest Network.
Back here at the top of the sixth inning at Municipal Stadium, a quick three-pitch flyout off the bat of Kyle Walker. Has one out retired for the Eagles. Noah Connor coming in to pitch here in this, the top of the sixth inning. Vincent Borghese got through all four innings. He did allow six runs, but got through four. Started the fifth, allowed a base runner, and then the wheels kind of came off. They, they kind of fully came off. Gomes came in, didn't record an out on seven pitches. Gutowski was able to get two outs, but ultimately it took them going to Noah Connor to get out of the inning. And so now Co Connor back up here. And he falls behind Anthony Charles and just goes the safe route, puts him on base with a five-pitch walk. So Adam McAvoy, who checked into the game for Kalen Camps after Camps got hit by a pitch, he's back up for his first A-B. McAvoy, a junior criminal justice major from Sewell, New Jersey. You have to worry about Anthony Charles, folks, because he is 6-for-6 six six on stolen bases today. What, 4-for-4 four four back in the first game. 2-for-2 two two so far in game number two. And so he will definitely have the attention of Noah Connor. Yeah, you, there you go. Yet to throw a pitch over, but it's to throw a pitch in to McAvoy, but he's already thrown over twice. Noah, a Western Massachusetts resident from West Springfield, pops this one straight up, giving it a look from behind the plate to Zwiegbaum, but that's over his head, over our head, and over everything bouncing around the parking lot somewhere. Connor making his fourth appearance of the year for the Eagles. He is 1-0 in the win-loss department. He's able to get that one win in spite of a 14.4 ERA. He's thrown five innings of work, has allowed 12 hits, eight runs, all of them earned. Runner going, and it will be the sixth stolen base today for Anthony Charles. He is getting a season's worth of bag work in this contest. And just for what else that it's worth, folks, Anthony Charles has one hit today. Just like Johnson, he's walked four times, one hit, and he's been on the base paths and just wreaking havoc all day long. He's back in scoring position with one out, and that might get him there. Lifted to deep left field. Gill going back. Still going back. Wow, a basket catch on the warning track about 370 feet away from home plate. Danny Gill, his second highlight catch of the afternoon. It's so far out there to left field. Any other CACC ballpark, and that's a two-run home run to left. But Gill under it, reads it, backtracking, makes the catch with his back to home plate, running into the left field wall. That is a huge second out of the inning, and it all comes down to the DH, Dante DiSabatino. Runner going is Charles again. The throw is in time, but it's behind Rivera, and so... Look, it's just a foregone conclusion at this point. He's 3-for-3 three three now in this game. He's 7-for-7 seven seven on the day. He's 16 of 7... No, 17 of 18 on the season. And that's just what happens when you let Anthony Charles reach base. McAvoy, meanwhile, getting robbed in an early plate appearance for him. What could have been a home run? Looking at the numbers here, that was the 36 at bat for Adam McAvoy. He does have two doubles and a triples, but has yet to hit his first collegiate home run. And once again, any other ballpark, that's way out of here. Instead, he's on Danny Gill's highlight reel. D. Sabatino ahead in the count 2-0. and oh. Connor gets that one to dot the outside corner. And he's back one. It's 2-1. and one. If the Eagles can get out of trouble here without Charles scoring, they will send... Corchado, Brennan, and Karen to the dish in the bottom of the sixth. And that's the last I'll talk about the bottom of the sixth inning as Connor instead on that 2-1 pitch misses well inside. He's got a problem to worry about here in the form of Di Sabatino. 
one of the better just bench depth guys that you will get at this level. 3-1 pitch coming. Missing low and DeSabatino showing you the patience at the dish. That's his ninth walk in just 22 ABs on the season. And Demetrius Johnson, who showed a good patient eye at the plate. He's walked four times in total today. Has a hit, a strikeout, and was hit by a pitch. So he's seen a little bit of everything across the seven at-bats he's already had today. Runners on the corners, two out, and a quick little throw back to first. Corchado doesn't even apply the tag. He just gives it right back to Noah Connor. Anthony Charles at third. He got there by, you guessed it, walking, stealing second, and third. Less of a fleet-footed runner in DeSabatino, and I think Noah Connor might think he has something there. Tries to throw over and get him again. DeSabatino back safely both times. Now he comes set, delivers, bounces that one in. We've seen Brian Zwiegbaum have to do a lot behind the dish. I, I do think one ball has gotten past him, but... And you know that you're you're gonna get one of one or two of those every now and then, but it's a 10-8 game. It, it could be more even if it wasn't thanks to great stops like that one right there from Brian Zwiegbaum. Just drops down to a knee. Noah Connor was cruising right along. If nothing else, at least he was finding the strike zone early on in the top of the six. In a bit of a pickle right now. And that's because of this. Problems fighting the strike zone. That one came out of the hand kind of funny. Hard to think Johnson, who's shown such a good eye, is going to do anything other than keep the bat on his shoulders here. DeSabatino on at first. Charles on at third. 3-0 pitch coming. Taken for a strike over the outside corner. Now, we saw Johnson strike out in this similar situation earlier on in this game. He was ahead in the count 3-0, and and he took three straight pitches. Now all three were called for strikes. Connor, not going to give him the same opportunity here, bounces that one in. The fifth walk of the day for Demetrius Johnson that's spread across both games. He's up to 26 walks on the season now. That's 10 more than his next closest teammate. And this is unparalleled. This is Christian Petrillo's fifth at-bat of the contest, and it is fourth at-bat with the bases loaded. He does have an inside-the-park grand slam earlier in this contest, and admittedly, folks, when that happened, I kind of wrote this game off mentally. Instead, we're in the middle of an instant classic right now, and Noah Connor is scary hours. He's got to he's got to face down the leadoff hitter Petrillo right now and find a way to get him out. You can't walk him. That'll just bring in another run. And so, of all of the things that could be being discussed right now at the plate, so you want to think it might be time for like a hidden ball trick or something like that. This is the time to do it. We'll let Coach Scold and the infield talk it out with Noah Connor. We'll be right back here for this huge at bat between Connor and Petrillo. And back we are here on the Nest Network. Bases loaded full of lightning here in the top of the sixth inning of game number two. Lightning leading your Eagles 10-8. to eight. Huge at-bat right now. Christian Petrillo at the dish. Noah Connor on the bump. And the first pitch misses low for Noah Connor. Admittedly not the best numbers for Noah Connor, but he's 1-0 and on the season. He's only walked two batters, so those walks to Charles 
and D. Sabatino and Johnson, very uncharacteristic for what he's done up to this point. Five innings of work, now five walks on the season. He's behind a Petrillo in the count, 1-0, and but he gets one back right there, just catching the outside corner. Gets us back even to 1-1. One and one. Petrillo came into action today, hitting just 247. He is sure to have bumped that up a couple of notches. Late swing on that one sends it over our press box. And Noah Connor, one strike away from getting himself out of a jam. And that's really what the Eagles have been doing all day. The only jam they couldn't get themselves out of was in the seventh inning of game number one. And then, you know, they lost five to four because of it. But showing some grittiness and resiliency. The one-two pitch bounced in and Zwiegbaum again, showing you the reflexes and the good defense. And he's pumped up right now. Saved a run, keeps this a two-run ball game. Count stays even at 2-2, two and two, but you got a fresher, freshman, catcher. I think that's what I had meant to say there before I started it. The fresher. Yeah, the freshman catcher who is showing you some confidence and playing with it behind the plate. 2-2 two and two on the way to Petrillo. Big swing, he's out in front of it, and that's a loud foul ball. Well, you had seen Christian Petrillo offer some, I would say, kind of defensive swings, defensive-esque hacks to keep himself alive. He was swinging to drive the baseball there on that 2-2 pitch and had Noah Connor red, but was just too far out in front of it. So we'll do it again. 2-2. Two and two. Connor comes set from the stretch. That's popped up towards no man's land. It looks like the second baseman Keller is there, and Hunter Keller puts it away. Wow, it took everything, but the Eagles get themselves out of trouble and now bring up three, four, and five to lead off the bottom of the sixth inning. We've seen just about everything today at Municipal Stadium. Might as well see an Eagles comeback win too, am I right? Stick around, we'll be right back with the bottom of the six here on the Nest Network. Well, folks, if you have been with us ever since the start of our doubleheader at 1 p.m., you have seen nothing but nonstop good baseball. And thank goodness for us, Game 2 has lived up to the difficult precedent that Game 1 has set. 18 combined runs here, and we're heading to the bottom of the sixth of a scheduled seven-inning game with the Eagles trailing but in striking distance down to the Goldie Beacom College Lightning 10-8. to This is Ryan Pozo in the middle of of his second inning of work, Nate Miller was able to get through four and two-thirds. But they had to bring in Pozo to secure that final out. Corchado, even in the count now, one and one. Remember, Miller, the starting pitcher, came into action with a 1.17 ERA. Pozo... A little, just a little bit closer to reality. Is is sitting at four point three on the season. We have had five different half innings with three or more runs scored. It's been a crooked number fest here at Municipal Stadium. Pozo looking to put away Corchado. Wow, just a great little 
I, that's less than a slap. I mean, that is a throw of the bat to keep the AB alive with two strikes. He's able to flare it off just past the post dugout. And we'll do it again with the count one and two. You like to see Corchado keeping the AB alive. That pitch was well off the strike zone, but got to do what you can with the two strike count. And how about this? Swinging two strikes and Petrillo finally makes his play in center field. He had so many close calls, a couple of run-ins with the Sun, and he finally gets the squeeze, robbing Corchado on a line-out. And here comes Jimmy Brennan. Brennan, one for two technically today in this game with a walk. Two for four back in game number one. First pitch swinging, misses that one. And it's behind the catcher for strike one. Jimmy coming into action today with the fourth best average on the team. 292, seven doubles, two homers. And he already has three RBI over the course of both games. So he started today with 15. He's up to 18. Pozo bounces that one in to even the count back out at one and one. Brennan reaches out. This is going to be a very tough play for Coleman'sberger. Goes with the bare hand and gets Jimmy Brennan by a step. Oh, you hate to see that right there as Brennan put that one. When he put it into play, I thought reading Pozo's body language that he was going to seed the base hit, but Coleman'sberger said, oh, no, no, charges it. Keeps the glove against his body, but uses the bare hand and gets Brennan by a step. And now DJ Karen, who's in the middle of a phenomenal day, especially here in game number two, all of a sudden needs to put bat to ball just to keep this happening alive. But when Coleman'sberger is playing defense like that, oh, hold the phone. The scoop not made by Musi at first. I thought Coleman'sberger was going to one, two, three. The Lightning all the way out of the bottom of the six. Instead, the good hustle from Karen legs out the infield single. <laughs> so legging out the infield single is Karen. Another base hit for him. And it brings Rivera up. Amidst a big day. Rivera, technically one for two. No, one for three, but he has a two RBI double and an RBI ground out. So three ribbies already on the day for the six-hole hitter. Out of Clifton, New Jersey. 1-0 pitch coming. Back in plenty of time is Karen. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to run DJ Karen here. And he's not, he's a fast runner, but he's not the best at stealing bases. Just four of seven on the year. 1 0 pitch, Rivera hits it where they ain't. And the rally continues here as Karen didn't get the best jump off the bag. So he'll hold it second. Another base hit for Rivera. And now Sosa is the go ahead run at the dish for the Eagles. Baseball, it's a game of inches, folks. If Coleman'sberger gets that throw up a little bit higher, he gets Karen out. But Karen is able to leg out the single, followed by a Rivera base hit. And now Sosa, with an RBI hit today, has a chance to maybe even tie this game up, maybe even give Post the lead. It's a huge breaking ball from Pozo. He kind of pulled it out of the hand, misses wide, and Sosa... You have to think he's at bat right now with a very conservative approach, but he's in front in the count, 1-0. and So it's a 200 hitter on the season, up to 7 RBI now after recording an RBI earlier on in this contest. 1 for 3 today. A chance for maybe a trademark hit of his true freshman season. He's ahead of Pozo in the count, 2-0. Swing, back up the middle. It should be an easy play for the second baseman, Kelly, and that it is. 
That was Walker, part of me, that came over and made the play at second. Sosa frustrated with himself. He had one to hit, but the play is made, and we head to the top of the seventh inning. We saw plenty of fireworks in the top of the seventh the last time. Maybe we'll see some in the bottom of the seventh as well, but we'll take a quick break here. And when we come back, it's the seventh inning from Municipal Stadium. Lightning 10, Eagles 8. Back here at Municipal Stadium, and the Eagles will start off the top of the seventh inning with their fifth different pitcher used today. Coming in, the true freshman, number 39, Ryan Smith, standing six foot two, 175 from right down the road in West Hartford, Connecticut. One of three players on this post university team to attend Conrad High School, and we actually have a couple. Two other players from Goldie Beacom that also went to Conrad. So Conrad High, have your moment right now here at Municipal Stadium. Smith coming in for the Eagles. And if my stats are right here, and let me just check to make sure that there's nothing hiding on the backside of the play, this is his first ever collegiate appearance. So, hey, welcome to the game. I guess no pressure, right? Because it's a conference game, a two-run conference game in the top of the seventh inning. And not just that. It is the three, four, or pardon me, the two, three, and four hitters. The meat of the order for the Lightning. And first pitch swinging, Coleman'sberger grounds it to Cornwell. Long throw, and they get the out. Welcome to college baseball, Ryan Smith. One pitch, one out as he recovers the old, as he retires, pardon me, the ultra dangerous Braden Coleman'sberger on one pitch. If you're Ryan Smith, you can retire right now. One for one, you've gotten out. You've got the 0 point ERA. Baseball's easy, <laughs> but he's going to have to do it again now against the hottest hitter on Goldie Beacom College, Garrett Musey. He's first pitch swinging. Q tips this one to Keller. Diving play. Throw to the base. Got him at first. Oh, baby. Ryan Smith with two pitches and two of the prettiest executed plays you will see defensively. Keller had to cover so much ground. Luckily for him, the ball was kind of queuing back his direction, but he gets Musi by a step. Unreal start to the collegiate career of Ryan Smith. And he has a chance at a three-pitch inning in his very first inning of work. Darren Miller, the right-handed batter wearing number 16, next up here for the Lightning. And you had to think the Goldie, Beacon, Goldie Beacom dugout was telling him, no, I don't care how well you're seeing the ball right now. You're taking the first pitch. We're not letting this kid 1-2-3 us. Still a chance for a conventional 1-2-3 inning. As Smith takes a lot off that one and spins the breaking ball, misses inside. Wow. Handcuffs Miller on that one, low and in. And Ryan Smith, welcome to your moment. A chance to go one, two, three here against the Lightning. That one's lined back up the middle, and there goes that fun. Another hit for Darren Miller, a day to remember for number 16. He's now two for four in game two, four for eight in total on the day, and instead of that one, two, three inning, it's another tough test 
in the form of Kyle Walker. So that is the ninth hit of the game for Goldie Beacom. Throw back over, not in time. Post University out hitting the Lightning. 12 hits to Goldie Beacom's nine. Smith. No, can't get that one off the outside corner. Kyle Walker with just one hit so far today. He came in hitting 294, really the lone lightning everyday starter. Not having a big day offensively. Smith, that one kind of got caught in his hand on the way out. You could see the, the quick little chest tap towards his catcher's weak bound. And he's behind in the count 2-0. and oh. We're three weeks past daylight savings time now, so there's going to just be plenty of daylight here around the Municipal Stadium as there's a big swing and a miss. But what you do have to worry about now, especially for post-university coming up in the bottom half of the seventh inning, is these shadows. They haven't just crept in. I mean, they are loud and pronounced, and they're very close to start cutting off the space between the pitcher's mound and the batter's box. And whenever that happens, it becomes a completely different animal. You're not just tracking a baseball you're tracking a baseball and dealing with it getting darker before it gets into the plate on you. So Smith, I mean, it's paramount to work as quickly as possible here because you're up against that sun when it's your time to bat in the bottom of the inning. And right as I say that, all of a sudden, Smith, who didn't have any trouble finding the strike zone against his first two batters, is behind in the count to Walker 3-1. and one. Walker could be sitting on one in his happy place. Let's see. No, instead, throws the bat at it. Zwiegbaum heading towards me, right at the wall, and he makes the catch right up against the fence, retiring the lightning in the top of the seventh. He was truly almost out of space. He only had the room he had. He made the catch about four feet in front of me here at the press box, and that is a huge no runs, one hit allowed inning for Ryan Smith and his first ever inning of collegiate baseball, or at least collegiate baseball at Post University. And so, the Lightning had the fireworks in the seventh inning in game one. Let's see if the Eagles have some in game number two. Bottom of the seventh, Pozo on the mound looking to close it out for the Lightning when we return on the Nest Network. We're back here at Municipal Stadium getting ready for the bottom of the seventh inning. It is 8, 9, and 1 due up on the Eagles' order. And Jalen Kelly going to be nodded for the pinch hit. Kelly, one hit in his game one start. His average sits right at 250 on the season. Huge opportunity for the senior out of Naugatuck, Connecticut, the graduate of Seymour High School. Just an opportunity to set the table here for Post University as Pozo starts him off with an inside ball. After Jalen Kelly, it's Brian Zwiegbaum, who's two of three today, and then back up to Pavelchak at the top of the order. Huge cut there from Kelly. Misses it over the top, and the count even at one and one. Could see head coach Ray Scold there working the third base coach box. Kelly into the hole. Great snag there. Miller across the diamond, and Darren Miller 
supplementing his big offense with some good defense as well. Gets Kelly by a couple of steps. And there's a quick out here in the bottom of the seventh. So Zwiegbaum next up. Not two for three, two for two. With an RBI and a base on balls. Zwiegbaum, big day here in his freshman season. And he takes a big looping breaking ball that misses low from Pozo and puts him ahead in the count 1-0. Eight runs on 12 hits, one error for the Eagles. Ten runs on nine hits and an error for Goldie Beacom. And how about that? That is a way to reach base every time. Zwiegbaum, it wasn't a fastball, it was a breaking ball, but just wears it off the top of the helmet. And uh, he's tough. He completely just chucks the bat over to the dugout with a smile and heads to first. You can see our second base umpire. That's his due diligence. He's responsible for making sure Zwiegbaum's okay. Everybody's laughing, so... That's the, the best case scenario right there. That's what you wear batting helmets for. Zwiegbaum, a perfect day. Four for four in terms of on-base percentage. Two for two still. And now the tying run in the form of the leadoff hitter, Michael Pavelchak, in the left-handed batter's box. Pavelchak, one for three today. It was a two-RBI single. Back in the bottom of the fifth. Could tie this game with one swing of the bat, and he tried to do it on that swing right there. It was out in front of it. Misses on the big swing, and he's behind in the count 0 and 1. Ryan Pozo this season has allowed 15 runs, 13 of them earns. He has allowed 27 hits. So he's been the beneficiary of some good defense behind him. That one is foul tipped. It doesn't allow Zwiegbaum to advance. On the ball behind, and so Pavelchak quickly now having to switch into defensive hitting mode behind the count, one and two. Pozo, why he is so good is his control. He has walked just five batters, and he struck out 23. Looking for 24, and Pavelchak, really good defensive use of the bat right there to just throw the bat at that one. He asked the umpire, hey, was that one a strike? I, I think the umpire told him no. But you can't get mad at it, keeping the A-B alive. Dugout making some noise here for Post University. The senior from Nyack, New York, Michael Pavelchak, waits the 0-2 pitch from Bo Pozo, and he pulls that one low and away. So Pavelchak gets one back. Zwiegbaum feigned like he was going on the pitch. He stayed put at first, but... Could that create some issues for Pozo? Misses that one, and he pulls it well wide. And Pozo, once again, I, I just mentioned it. He's a pitcher that doesn't walk batters. But right now, uh, approaching this is smartly, you don't need to put anything over the plate for Michael Pavelchak. Maybe make him chase a pitch on the border. Now Pozo's thinking about Zwiegbaum right now because that's the fourth time he's thrown over to check on the freshman catcher. I understand that. You don't want to let any base runner get comfortable. But that's a runner in Brian Zwiegbaum who has yet to even attempt a stolen base. 0 for 0 on the season. 2-2 pitch coming. That under the hands of Pavelchak misses inside and Pozo, he of just five walks this entire season was ahead of MP in the count 0-2. Now we're full. Zwiegbaum, maybe one step more on the lead off the bag. Pozo comes set. Pavelchak right back up the middle. It almost hits the body of Pozo. It gets past him. That slowed up Zwiegbaum ever so slightly, but look at this. Cornwell at the dish as the winning run. The game-tying run is on first. And Evan Cornwell... In the middle of a big day, one for four in game number two, two for four in game number one, a 287 hitter on the season. What an opportunity for him here. Pozo the pitcher. Cornwell shows bunt, gets the bat to it. It stays fair. It's going to be a long throw, and it's made by McAvoy. 
It advances the runners. It might all come down to this. Corchada up the lefty against Pozo. You have Brennan in the on-deck circle, and if you think, oh, well, they might walk Corchada to get to Brennan in the righty-on-righty matchup, Jimmy Brennan's the hottest hitting batter right now for Post University, and he's three or four today. So Cornwell, the sack bunt, advances the runners to second and third. It's Brian Zwiegbaum at third. Michael Pavelchak at second. Chris Corchado, the winning run at bat up against Ryan Pozo with two outs. Oh, wow, and the umpire bailing out the Eagles there. It looked as if Pozo dotted the outer black. Maybe it was high, but it's called a ball, and it puts Corchado ahead in the count now 1-0. and Chris with 22 ribbies now on the season. Two today after entering today with 20. 1-0 pitch coming. Chopped at, over the head of Pozo. It's going to be a tough play for Coleman'sberger, and he gets Corchado by a step. And that does it for game number two. A hard-fought battle for the post-university Eagles. They get the opportunity to tie it up. And they leave it at the hands of Goldie Beacom College. So for the second time today, Goldie Beacom victorious over your post-university Eagles. Game two ends with a final score of 10-8. to eight. Ryan Pozo, I believe... Well, we'll have, to, we'll have to wait on when those runs came across. It was Miller that cruised right along. Pozo had to clean it up for him. So not quite sure on first blush who, who gets either the win or the loss. We'll get that for you in a split second. But the final score here, Goldie Beacom, 10, Post University, 8. The win moves Goldie Beacom's record to 20-11 and 11 on the season and 6-3 and in conference play. The loss brings Post to sub-500. 15 wins, 16 losses, and a 7-3 and record in conference play. And that'll do it for us today at Municipal Stadium. For Kristen and Bianca, my name is Chris, Chris Del Sordo. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today. Sorry we couldn't get you a win, but remember, you can watch Post University Sports live online every game for free on the Nest Network. That's the CACC Network. And remember, all games also live on YouTube at Go Post Eagles. 5-4 to four Goldie Beacom in Game 1, 10-8 Goldie Beacom in Game Number 2, and that'll do it for us today. Have a great rest of your weekend. Go Eagles!